welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. This is Phasex, a blaster that I created over the course of the past month out of an old long shot that I found at the thrift store. Let's just get into it. Starting with the design of this blaster, I used a pre-coat of Rust-Oleum Black before doing three coats of Rust-Oleum Blue over the entire shell, and then one more coat of black over the grip in order to make it this shiny, nice black and give it a little bit more volume than it originally has. The paint does show up in layers, and there is a slight noticeable difference from the original quality of the long shot's grip. I honestly do think it's an improvement, and I'm glad that I did that because the grip feels very nice. The stock here was completely replaced, not using the stock that it originally came with, instead using a stock from an Icon long shot, mainly because it was easier to stabilize and was way more structurally sound than the one that this long shot came with. I'm going to show a before picture at the end of this video followed by an after picture, just so you can understand how badly this long shot was when I found it. After doing all that, I also did a lot of hand details in silver. Everything that is silver on the main shell was hand painted. I did not use any Sharpie this time, and there's a very good reason for that. On top of that, this is a custom nameplate, and there is an identical one on the other side that I printed myself and designed myself, which was actually quite an interesting process, and it went down way better than I originally expected, and shows the no name of this blaster, Azex. Going back to the ergonomics, as I said before, the main grip on this blaster is incredibly nice and is just a standard long shot grip. As for the foregrip, it is now using a worker pump kit, which is very nice and comfortable, albeit not the same quality as something injection molded because it's a 3D printed part. And as for the stock, it is using a standard long shot stock, but has been reinforced with a piece of thick PVC pipe with styrofoam around it to hold it centered in the middle. So it is a very nice, very strong place to put your shoulder that can withstand the heavy prime that this blaster now has. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is essentially just a long shot. So it works the same as the original long shot did. You pull this back to prime the blaster, you take a magazine with a dart in it, put it in, you push, the, you push this forwards, and then you can fire once. The trigger on this blaster is a lot better than it originally is, not just because I used a worker metal trigger and metal catch setup, but also because it has been heavily lubricated to absolute perfection. So aside from the snazzy paint job, what did I actually do to this blaster outside of the metal trigger and metal catch that I just mentioned? Well, there's also a metal bolt sled, which improves the integrity of the sled mechanism by a landslide. And just to top it all off, there's a worker 9 kilogram spring with a silicone spacer inside of the plunger tube, which boosts the FPS of this blaster from like mid to high 80s to low 90s, which is a very, very good improvement, basically doubling the FPS this blaster originally had out of the box. Let's take a look at it firing. Shooting these Zuru skins darts. Jam. Still jamming. Tends to happen when it goes too fast. Uh, luckily though, it's not too hard to clear this out. And then, um, yep, we're clear. Five darts left. Still jamming. Why is it jamming? Okay, we done? Are we done yet? Here we are. So as you can see, the blaster is performing well, but the groupings are kind of all over the place and it tends to jam. I'm not quite sure why that is. It doesn't really happen if you go slow with it, but it does happen quite a bit if you go fast with it. So just something to note for the future. But here's the burning question. Why did I decide to do this to a Gen 1 long shot? Because I do seriously think this was a Gen 1 just from the color scheme and the way that it looks on the inside and the, the amount of wear and tear on the internals is insane. It's way more than any just old end strike blaster that I've come across. Three reasons. One, to irritate collectors. Two, this long shot was in horrible condition. I'm talking it was nicked, it was scratched up, the paint was all chipped, there were actual 
chunks of the stock that had been like dented in and cracked. The blaster was in such awful, awful shape. It was really sad to see it like that, especially because I'm sure that someone somewhere really loved that blaster before, but it got into such bad shape that no one wanted to use it anymore, so it ended up at the thrift store, which really sucks to see because the long shot is such a beloved blaster. So I figured I would at least go for my absolute biggest chance and try to fix it, and I think it paid off very, very well. This blaster was on the brink of death anyway, and I managed to make it do something new and far better than it would have ever been able to do before. And three, over the past year, Phase One Foam has been a very, very wonderful person in my life. He's my best friend, he has helped me film videos, he has helped me earn the money to be able to make some of these blasters available. He's donated extensively to my streams. He's been very encouraging. He's gone through hell, he's made it back, and he does not stop fighting no matter what happens. And honestly, his perseverance is something that I admire greatly, and he really doesn't feel like he needs anything back, but he does. He has been such a wonderful person in my life that this was the least I could do to repay him for all the things that he has done. This is not my blaster, this is his. And I am simply reviewing this before I send it out because it's worth making a video on and I feel like I should at least address the elephant in the room being the modified long shot that's kind of been chilling in the background of some of my videos over the last couple days. So with that said, thanks for watching. Bye.